Hey Warriors, Miss Adams here, ready for our last Artastic Tuesday of distance learning. So I sure have missed you guys, but it's been so fun to connect with you each week and at least get a little bit of our art in every week. I've loved, loved seeing the drawings that you've posted so far. So please today, if you draw the elephant along with me, please post that on Facebook. Not just me, all the teachers love to see what you've been working on at home. So to finish out Artastic Tuesdays, we are gonna visit Africa. We are gonna explore some animals that live um, in the savannas of Africa. And of course, we have to draw an elephant, right? That's what I always think of when I think of cool African animals. So we are gonna jump right in and get started. We are gonna draw our, our um, elephant head on. So we're not gonna draw his body where you just see the side of his face and then his body coming off. We're gonna draw it more head on so we could really look at his cool face because I just think elephants are so awesome to see. So we are gonna start with his face and I suggest because it's a head on um, version of the elephant, I suggest you have your paper up and down tall today. Maybe a little different than what you would think. You'd normally put your paper sideways for a side view, but for this head on, I think it's, it's kind of easier to fit him on if your paper's up and down tall. And we're actually gonna start with his trunk. We're gonna start with a curve line for the top of his trunk for one of his wrinkles. So, since that's kind of in the center, and then we'll work around that. So all you're gonna do is start with a little curve line for the top of his trunk. Now, look. If I make a curve line this big, all you're gonna have room for for your elephant is a big old trunk, okay? You wanna make it a little smaller, even though he's a big animal, you wanna keep it kind of small at first. So I'm gonna look not in the middle of my paper, but go up a little ways, and I'm just gonna start with a curve line for the top of his trunk, for one of those wrinkles. Then we're gonna make the eyes, and now we know where to put the eyes since we've got that first curve line. On the corner of this curve line, I'm just gonna go up and over just a little ways for his first eye. So I'm gonna look at the corner, I'm gonna go up and over just a little ways, and I'm gonna make a curve line for one eye. And then we're gonna finish it off with a curve line underneath. Same thing on the other side, since we're doing a head-on view, just like our faces, symmetrical. We've talked about symmetrical before, same on both sides. His faces too, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna look at this curve line. I'm gonna go up and over just slightly and make another curve line and finish it off. Then we're gonna go ahead and fill in that space just like always with almost a solid dot, but we're gonna leave a little space of white, of course, to show the reflection off of his eye since we're making a very realistic elephant. So we're just gonna fill it in. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to draw his trunk. So his trunk, this is something that I didn't know that I just learned this week when I was reading up on elephants. Their trunks are actually their nose and their upper lip kind of stick together. They're, it's called a fusion when they're sort of put together like this. And so that's the top of their trunk and then it comes down. So scientists say that it's sort of a, a lip nose together fusion is what their trunk is so and of course you guys have all seen them at the zoo or at the circus they pick things up with their trunk they slurp up water through their trunk that little end of their trunk can grab onto things so very important of course so we are going to go ahead and make his trunk now look i'm going to make a long curve line down make it as long as you want their trunks are long. So I wouldn't make it just this long. That's not gonna look like an elephant. You're gonna make it nice and long. And notice his trunk is almost as tall as his body. So kind of keep that in mind. If you want his body to be this long, your trunk is gonna need to be almost that long. Okay, so we're gonna start on the side of the wrinkle that we first made. And I'm gonna make a nice long curve line down. I'm gonna go on this side of the wrinkle. And I'm gonna make it a nice long curve line down. Now look, it starts to get a little skinnier towards the end. See how it's a little wider here? And I'm gonna very carefully get a little skinnier on the end. And then because it's almost like fingers on the end that can kind of grab things, there's a little bump to show where it can move its trunk on the end to, to pick up its hay or its grass or whatever it's eating. So we're just gonna make a little bump in the middle, kind of down and back up in the middle. And then he's got wrinkles all along his trunk. So just coming right along, I'm 
just gonna make curve lines all along this trunk, kind of following the curve, taking my time. And they can be a little rough and bumpy, they can be smooth, they can be all different. Now watch, as his trunk is curving, I'm gonna follow that curve. So I'm gonna start to slant my curves, okay? I'm gonna slant them to make them go a different way, a little bit of a different way. Now, we are gonna draw this side of his face when you're when it's um, a head-on look at the elephant. They have a little bit, It's almost it almost looks like their cheeks kind of sticking out just a little bit. So I'm gonna start from the corner of my eye and I'm not gonna make a super huge cheek, like a, like a big flat chipmunk cheek. I'm gonna make it just curved out just a little bit and come in and touch, okay? We're just gonna curve it out just slightly and we're not gonna make it too long because remember his trunk is very long. So if I make his cheek this long, it's gonna make his trunk not look as long. We just wanna come in just a little bit. So I'm gonna slightly curve it out and come in and touch. From the corner of this side, slightly curve it out and come in and touch. And this is actually where his tusks are. Now his tusks are those long pointy things and they are, what I read, they never stop growing. So if you see an elephant with super long tusks, that means it's an older elephant, okay? They always grow. So, and that's for African elephants. Some elephants, um, especially in Asia, they don't have tusks, but African elephants, elephants always do. So we're gonna go ahead and start his tusk from about where this, this little bump out towards the bottom of this curve line that we just did. I'm gonna make a curve line that kind of slants out for however long you want the tusk to be. If you want a, a young elephant, make it a little shorter. If you want a big old elephant, you can make it long, whatever you want. We're gonna go ahead and make that curve line out and then watch, we're just gonna curve it back in and it's gonna sort of disappear behind the trunk, okay? So it doesn't have to come up and touch exactly his little cheek. It can sort of disappear into the trunk. Same thing over here. And again, they're probably gonna be symmetrical. Now, sometimes their tusk might break off a little bit or something, but you want, might wanna make it sort of the same size, okay? But if it's not perfect, again, it's elephant tusk. It might not be perfect. We're just gonna make it curve out, and then we're gonna let it disappear right into the trunk. And notice mine are not perfect. That's okay, maybe, you know, it's nature, right? Nothing's perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and draw the side of his face right here. So look, I'm gonna start wherever that little cheek was, I'm gonna start up a little ways and it's gonna be very close to the eye. Their eyes, um, we don't see too much of, they don't have big fat faces. They're, um, it's gonna curve up pretty close to the eye. So it's gonna curve up close to the eye and it's gonna go just a little bit above the eye. So I'm gonna start from a, that cheek that we made and it's just gonna, Curve up a little bit above the eye and stop. Same thing, symmetrical, same on both sides. We're gonna do the same thing over here. It's gonna curve up close to the eye and stop at about the same point. And then this actually is gonna curve out for his ears. So we'll just see the top, this little top line, well not the very tip top, but this line over here for the top of his ear. We're gonna curve it out on one side and curve it out on the other side, okay? So we're gonna start here and curve it out on this side, curve it out on this side. Their ears are so important. They're really big, of course, we know that, but do you know why? Scientists say that they um, have a little bit more room on their ears to kind of let them have more surface area, more space that can be cooled off. And of course you see them flapping. If they're fighting, they might flap them to kind of try to intimidate another elephant. And um, they also flap them when they're excited or playful. So, uh, but mostly it's to help cool them off. So we're gonna go ahead and make the ears so important. I'm gonna start about, see where this, this line right here touches? Go above that, maybe over just slightly. And I'm now gonna make a curve line again for the top part of the ear. And we're just gonna let it curve down just a little bit. We'll talk about what we're gonna do in just a minute. We're gonna let it curve over and down just a little bit past. And then we're gonna make that bump for the top of his head. So I'm gonna make this curve line right in between those two lines we just made. We're gonna make a curve line right in between. And it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. It could be a little rough and bumpy, of course. Then we're gonna jump back down to the bottom part of his face 
to make the bottom part of his ears. So if you look kind of a little bit above the tusks, remember the tusks right here, a little bit above that is where we're gonna make another curve line that comes out on either side for the bottom of his ear. And then we're gonna connect it, and it is sort of wavy, bumpy, it's not a perfectly smooth line. So we're just gonna kind of connect it, kind of wavy, bumpy, not perfect. Same thing over here, wavy, bumpy, not perfect. And we've got our elephant's ears. Now, as I said earlier, we're drawing more of a head-on view of the elephant. So it might look a little funky at first, but it'll make sense at the end, okay? So don't worry about it if it looks a little strange. First, we're gonna start with the middle part of his legs. So if you look at the trunk, we're gonna come down towards the bottom, not where it really curves over, but you know, kind of towards the bottom where it maybe starts to curve over. And I'm just gonna make these one, two lines very skinny next to each other for uh, the middle part of his two front legs. Okay, so just watch, it's a little different, but just hang with me. I am gonna start, I'm gonna kind of find where that curve line of the trunk is starting to curve over, kind of start right about there, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm not gonna make these lines much longer than the trunk that's there, okay? I'm gonna start and I'm gonna make a little line that comes down and it might sort of curve just slightly and super, super close next to it, another line that comes down. This is where his legs, his two legs are. Then I'm gonna make his big old elephant feet. So don't make a short little curve line over. He's gonna look like he's got skinny giraffe legs, okay? We wanna make it curve over nice and wide for um, the bottom of his feet. Oh, and you know what else I read? Elephants are these huge animals. They're actually the biggest land animal in the whole wide world, but they're really good swimmers. You would never think that. I would never guess that, but they're really, really good swimmers. And in fact, they will remember how their trunk is a fusion of their nose and their upper lip. That means that they can breathe through their trunk. They will stick their trunk up out of the water and breathe like they have a snorkel on. Isn't that cool? So we're gonna go ahead, anyway, back to the feet. We're gonna make his big feet, okay? So I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna curve it over nice and wide for however wide you want his elephant feet to be. Same thing over here, symmetrical, it's gonna be the same, but going the opposite way. I'm gonna make it curve over. And then there's gonna be just a little bit of a bump in his feet kind of, just like our ankles are skinnier, if you look at your ankle, it's a little skinnier than the top part of your leg. They have a little bit of a skinnier ankle. Now this is an elephant, it's not super skinny. It just barely kind of curves in. So notice how it barely curves in for his ankle. So I'm just gonna make it curve in just a little bit. Curve in just a little bit, symmetrical. Then, on this side, because we do have just a little, you can see a little bit of the back part of his body, his body is bent just a little bit. We're gonna make this line coming up a little bit taller. Look, it's almost gonna touch the ear, okay? So I'm gonna start here. Oh, and of course, I am gonna guess mine runs into the tusk. Yours might not. It depends on how big your tusk is, okay? So just stop it at the tusk if you need to. So I'm gonna come up and it's just gonna come up carefully, following that trunk. And it might start to slant out just a little bit. And I'm gonna go to about my tusk instead because my tusk, I made my tusk up a little bit more. This tusk is sticking down a little bit more. You just decide how tall you want his legs to look and then stop. This time, I'm gonna make this line, like I said, his body's just slightly curved. So we're gonna make this just slightly different. I'm gonna bring this leg up and then it's gonna curve out a little bit more. So watch, I'm gonna make it start to curve up. Oh, I gotta stop and jump over my trunk, of course. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit and look, when I get about, you know, eh, halfway, I'm gonna make it bump out just slightly. This is gonna be a very realistic detail, okay? So I'm gonna make it curve out just slightly and then it's gonna stop. See how I stopped it a little bit lower than this line? This line's up a little higher, so I'm gonna make sure to stop that one just slightly lower, okay? Just slightly lower. So then, and I know he looks really weird right now. Just trust me. Now, we're gonna look at this line that we stopped over here. We're gonna look at this line. 
I'm gonna come down just a little bit and I'm gonna make this curve line stick in really close to his body. I'm gonna make this curve line come up and touch the ear. Wherever it touches is fine. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna stick it pretty close to the body. Oh, and look, I have to stop and jump over my tusk. You might too. We're just gonna make it come all the way up and touch his ear. Now, we're gonna see just a tiny bit of his belly, okay? Because of the way his body's turned just a little bit. We're gonna see a tiny bit of a wrinkle here and then his belt, kind of his belly going to his backside. So, I'm gonna look at this line. I'm gonna go down just a little bit and I'm gonna make another curve line that kind of comes up. And notice how it's a little taller. I'm gonna make it a little taller than this one right here. Then slightly below that, I'm gonna make another curve line. This time, this one's gonna come up and touch all the way to the ear. It just kind of is curving, it sort of disappears to his backside. Now for his back leg, I'm gonna start somewhere around here. See where these three lines touch? These three lines are all together right around here. Somewhere a little bit below that, I'm gonna start his back leg and I'm gonna make it shorter. Now this is further away. So it's gonna be shorter. It's gonna look shorter because it's further away. We've talked about things that are farther away. They look smaller as they go, right? If you're standing next to your friend, they look about the same size, but if they're way across the gym in PE, they look much smaller, right? So his leg isn't really shorter, it just looks that way because it's further away. So we're gonna start right here and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna stop it a little bit shorter than these two front legs, of course. Then I'm gonna make his big wide elephant foot and I'm gonna curve it over about, you know, about the same. We don't have rulers or anything, but about the same. We're gonna swing it in just a little bit. Remember to show just a slight ankle, not super skinny ankle, he's an elephant, but just a little bit. And then we're gonna bring it up and we're just gonna let it disappear into that back area. And then they of course have tails and you can show his tail kind of swishing out to the sides. You can see his little elephant tail and they're pretty skinny little tails and they've got the little fur on the end. So somewhere coming off of this line, you can make your tail kind of swishing to the side with a little curved line. And then pretty skinny next to it, we'll just double it. And then you can make that fur on the end, that extra little fur. And of course, they kind of use those tails to swap flies away. And um, you've even seen uh, the trunks when they're all in a row and the baby holds on to the mom's tail with his trunk. I think that's so cute. So we're just gonna, and you can add little fur marks in there or something if you want. Now we can add a few details. They of course have big, thick, round curve lines for their um, toenails. So we're gonna add, at the bottom of his feet, we're gonna go ahead and add some curve lines. One, two, three, nice, big and thick. For all of his toes at the very bottom, just some curve lines. If you, guys, they are wrinkly, wrinkly. If you wanna add like a few more curve lines, a lot of times on their ears, they've got, you know, some little wrinkles on their ears. Now, elephants love, love to take mud baths. They will use their trunks to splash mud all over them. They will even roll in the mud, especially the younger elephants. And the reason they do that is to keep them safe from the sun. They sunburn really easily, so they need to be, um, it's almost like sunscreen, like your adult at home might put sunscreen on you before you go outside in the summer. It's like their sunscreen. And they also, it helps protect them against like biting bugs, you know, and so they, are, they have a lot of wrinkles in their skin to help hold that mud and that moisture in to keep them cool because in the African savanna, it is hot, 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 and that sun is beating down on them all the time. So they have adapted like Miss, Miss Humphrey said last week, animals adapt. They use their trunk to get it all figured out for them so they're not super duper hot, okay? So we can add some more wrinkles on him. You could add some wrinkles, especially sort of like at the ankles. I could add a few wrinkles. It kind of curves in, maybe up on his legs. You guys just add as many wrinkles as you want so they're nice and they can roll around and get a nice mud bath. Okay, so get your elephant however you want. 
Then we're going to go ahead and add just a little bit of um, some background for Africa. So first of all, we need to make our horizon line. We've talked about it a million times where the sky touches the earth, where it looks like the sky is touching the earth. So not at his tiptoes or else it's gonna look like he's kind of hovering. And trust me, elephants do not hover. They are big old land animals. So we're gonna come up a little ways wherever you want your horizon line. You're gonna stop, jump over all the way off your page. You can, of course, he's out in the wilderness. You could add some little patches of grass if you want. Just up and down, nice and tall. Nobody's mowing the yard. In Africa, savannas, right? Where all the wild animals live. Nobody's mowing the yard. So you could make big, tall grass. You could add some rocks here and there. We've done rocks a million times, a little line at the bottom, and a rough, bumpy curve line on the top. So I could do that. Something else that's cool, um, in several different parts of Africa, you can see mountains in the background. So if you wanted to show some nice mountains, just kind of rough, bumpy line up and back down, rough, bumpy line up and back down off there in the horizon, then you could definitely do that. Now, this is exactly what we were talking about earlier, how things that are closer look bigger. Elephants are big animals, but they're not near as big as a mountain, right? He's so close to us in our picture that the mountains are gonna look small in the background to show that the mountains are very far away. Okay, so a little artist trick. Things that are far away tend to look much smaller. Okay, so of course, we know our elephant in real life is not taller than the mountain, but we're tricking whoever's looking at um, our artwork, we're tricking their eye to make them recognize that, oh, that mountain is far, far away. Okay, so it's a good little trick. You could absolutely even add a sun up in the sky. Now, we've talked about this before. Don't draw this. We've talked about this before. Does the real sun in real life have flat straight lines coming off of it? No. Okay? Nope. If you want a realistic sun, you could just make a little circle in the sky. You could make wispy clouds, nice thin clouds if you want to, or big fat puffy clouds, whatever you want. You guys have all done those before. So you're gonna design the rest of your background however you want. And be sure, friends, to have your adult put your picture, whatever you create today with me. Please be sure to put that on Facebook. We love, not just me, all the teachers at Western Oaks love to see what you guys are up to. It just makes our day. So be sure to put that on Facebook. And friends, I love you, I love you, I miss you. I hope that you guys have a great summer. I hope that you have fun. I hope you are safe and healthy. And I hope that you have a great time. And I hope you are ready to get back into the swing of things in the fall. I cannot wait to see you guys. Love you. Bye.